I'll let you kick it off for stock down because I'm gonna save my yelling one for the la- for the end. I've got a good one for the last one, so I will go with this one here. Um, Alfredo Morales from New York City, minus that one assist that he had at the very end of the game that meant nothing, was poor, like near dreadful. He had 50% dribble success in the middle of the field, which means he turned the ball over twice, two out of four. He was dribbled past twice when trying to defend and was 0-2 on tackles. He was basically just a cone who made one good pass. Um, Keaton Parks was having to do a lot of defensive. Oh, excuse me. Keaton Parks was having to do a lot of defensive recovery, um, and teams are going to start exploiting that, which is probably an explanation for why this team is struggling as much as they are. I wouldn't be shocked to see Man City be like, here's a super talented youth player like Daniel Herrera. Fill your hole, go win another cup. That means nothing. Um, but yeah, he just watching that game was very poor. It was a lot of really, really poor just decisions, attempts at dribbling out of the back when you shouldn't have. He didn't play well at all. So I'll be honest, didn't watch the game, but based on his numbers here, that feels a little harsh. So but are I'll you looking you, at I'll are you looking the at the who scored? Are you looking at the who scored thing that has him at like a 7.2? No, nah, sofa score. All right, so they, that's all because he had an assist in the 89th minute that meant absolutely nothing. You watch the game. I mean, his his number. I get it. It's not his best game, but listen, he had NYCFC have one win in five. NYCFC have one win in five games and can only be middle middle of the pack Guatemalan teams. Somebody needs to find out why, and I think it's because of him. I think it's because of Tati Castellanos, but that's just me. We we should talk about how, just really quick, about how NYC absolutely dropped the ball. I mean, this is this is um, oh god, who do I who do you compare this to? This is like worse than Daryl DK levels of dropping the ball on Tati because his stock price is plummeting right now. I mean, that's I, the stock price. Is, his his value is plummeting right now. Yeah, it is. It is, and I and I have this conversation with a an NYCFC supporter who follows us on Twitter, saying that oh well, you know, there's still the summer. He can still get sold in the summer. You're gonna sell him for the summer. You'll sell him maybe four million dollars. I mean, if if all he can do is score against mid level Guatemalan teams, nobody in South America, nobody in Europe is going to look at that and be like, yeah, that guy's gonna be great. It's just not how it's gonna work. Maybe you get a Mexican team to pay for him for a little bit, but yeah, I mean he's almost surely not going to go for twenty million at this point. He was never going to go for twenty million. Yeah, but they got something that was at least close. I think yeah, they, they should have taken fifteen, it. right? That was probably the closest you were going to get. You should absolutely take that deal if you have it on the table. Oh, it's not there anymore. <laughs> no, of course not. I, I think at best at right now you could get like ten million for him. Yeah. All right, so my. First player on stock down. I went with Ruan here. Oh, so, because he had an error leading to goal and uh, had well, a he wasn't two. he wasn't good other than that as well. I know he had. The why error are we? Why are you just dumping on Orlando City? This is getting. Ridiculous. I have two players on Orlando City. Like they're also my rival team. Like why am I not going to dunk on them? You just you just went after NYCFC for a guy that had a seven point one and seven point two rating. Oh my god! You didn't watch a game. <laughs> All right, Ruan. Definitely not known for his defensive work. Let's be honest here. He's good going forward. He's okay at best go at, at defending. And normally, as long as he's not a burden in defense, it's fine. Because he, he can add to the attack. This week, however, he was a burden. He had one clearance, one interception, and one tackle. And one error leading to a goal, like we mentioned. In the and in the attack, which is what I think you and I can both agree on, is his stronger suit. He only connected on one of four of his long balls, and didn't connect on the one cross that he attempted. So if he's not going to give anything going forward, and he's going to create errors leading to goals on defense, and not really have more than 
one clearance or one interception or one tackle. Definitely not a strong week for me. I think he he was a definitely a strong factor in, in them losing that game. Okay. My last stock down is not a player. Oh. It is an organization. Can you do that? Is this known, allowed? Known as pro referees. Oh, goodness. Here we go. Pro referees. The rant begins. I'll mute myself. <laughs> absolute nightmare of a weekend. And I'm going to start by picking on my crosstown rivals. In the eighth minute of the New York City game, they had an absolutely clear as day penalty from anybody who watched the game live or, or at home. Uh, I think it was, I, I can't remember who the, it was one of the younger defenders from uh, Toronto who came back, clipped the ankles of Tyus Magno, brought him down, penalty. Uh, clear as day. It was Thompson. His name is Thompson. Clear as day. Referee gets called to VAR. They show him the only video angle that is questionable in the call. Show him zero other angles of the actual decision. And Drew Fisher's just like, Drew, do better. And again, I'd have no problem. Keep NYC in the mud. Doesn't matter to me. But you can't make those decisions when you have a, a video assistant referee with 9 million angles to look at. You can't. It just doesn't happen that way. Let's fast forward to the Red Bull game. Tom Barlow commits a foul on the end of the, on the, on the touchline, right next to the assistant referee. It was a foul. There was nothing in it. Nobody got heated about it. Tom Barlow turns, walks away, whatever. The assistant referee runs four yards onto the field, gets into Tom Barlow's face, starts yelling at him and pointing at him like this. Tom Barlow is not like aggravated at all. He's not angry. He's not screaming. He's not yelling. None of the Toronto players are screaming, yelling, getting in his face either. This referee took it upon himself to get into this player's face who had done nothing but a simple foul, try to escalate it and get him kicked out of the game because he was on a yellow already. What are you doing? The game is not about you, Mr. Referee. Deal with it. Fast forward. The, I mean, there's a, a PK that probably should have been given for a handball before Red Bull had scored. VAR didn't look at it. It looked kind of clear to me, but it is what it is. Um, they gave an awful red card decision on Frankie Amaya, who came in. He was on a yellow already. I think the first yellow was kind of soft. Second, when he came in slide tackle, won the ball, went through, didn't touch the player. Guy crumbles down in a heap, and he goes straight to a second yellow for a red. No conversation with anybody. Again, just simple, poor decisions from not being in the right position. And I can say this now because I'm a referee. My final one goes to the Galaxy game. In the New England, or I'm sorry, not New England, in the Portland versus LA game, in the 46th minute, Pablo Bonilla was shown a straight red card after very lightly pushing away a Galaxy player who was getting into his face after some off the ball foul or something. Hands to the face didn't happen. Violent conduct didn't happen. Straight red was given and no VAR review. Again, you can't do that when you have this ability to review things like that. And these are only the games that I watch. I didn't even see there. I didn't watch um, instant replay from MLS, which I love by the way. Didn't watch any of that. These are just the games that I saw this weekend. It's gotta be better if we want the, the parody of the league get better. Tough day for the guys in yellow. Rant over. Good. I'm glad your rant's over for your fake pick. Stop it. You're telling Should me that an there's... organization. Go ahead. Give give me like Patrick Lamala so I can punch you directly in your face. <laughs> no, it's not Patrick Lamala. You still might want to punch me in the face. I I always would like to punch you in the face. There's never a time where I do not want to punch you in the face. My second stock down player is the year of Omir Fernandez. <laughs> For the audio listeners that are not watching, Andrew has gotten up and he's left. 
He's not happy about that one. Disrespect is so far off the charts. I'm about to hang up. No, it is not disrespectful. This is extremely disrespectful. What do you mean? Omir Fernandez played 55 minutes in the game. Can you can you tell me what position he was playing that game? Playing attacking <clears throat> midfield. Right. He was a central attacking midfielder. Kind of. I, I have his heat map. For the most part, he was central. Omir Fernandez finished that game, or the, the 55 minutes that he was on the field, with 12 touches and three passes. You have to actively avoid the ball to finish as an attacking midfielder with 12 touches and three passes. And and it wasn't like he was cleaning up shop on defense either. He wasn't bad, but he wasn't like putting in, you know, four interceptions and like five tackles. He had like an interception and a tackle. I don't, I don't remember the exact numbers. But it honestly just seemed like he was just running around for 55 minutes. And, and I, if for, for comparison purposes, I took a look at Drew Yearwood and Frankie Maya, who were the two other central midfielders. They were obviously a little bit in a deeper position than Omir. Both of them had over 40 touches and 20 passes each. But meanwhile, Omir had 12 touches and three passes. And this is a very good attacking Red Bull team. I know you can admit that. This team has looked great going forward. How do you not get involved in that at all? And not to mention, he lost possession five times while only managing 12 touches. So yeah, I put Omir here as stock down because it seemed like he was basically invisible on the field. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Good, because I didn't need to hear this garbage. <laughs> Would you like to know why Omer Fernandez only had 12 touches? Why? Because Red Bull had 35% possession. Why do all the people, everybody around him had way more touches than him? Yeah, because they all play around the back and kick it long, try to keep the ball high up the field, then win it back. But we couldn't win it back because they would just pick it up with Jones, Farrell, Bayer, Kessler and play it into their middle three. Our system did not, how many did Tom Barlow have? How many did Patrick Kamala have? A lot more. I'll pull it up right now. I'll get you the numbers. Please. Tom Barlow had, okay, Tom Barlow didn't have a lot more, but Tom Barlow had 18 touches and 11 passes. Patrick Kamala had 33 touches and 12 passes. Correct, because Patrick Kamala is our sprinter, tracked down the ball. Then okay, lay it Tom off. Barlow had lost ball plenty more points. than Omir Fernandez. And played just and played the same amount of minutes. He he did nothing. He did nothing on the field. You did nothing on the field. You I didn't do anything on the field. I wasn't out there. So it's like the it, it's like the Tony Snell stat oh, line. If you've ever Everybody seen Everybody needs that. a little bit of Tony Snell in their life. <laughs> if, if for those of you who know the Tony Snell meme, you'll understand what I'm going for. All right, should we should we go to Hype Trainer Dumpster no, Fire? I want to yell at you a little bit more. The disrespect that you are exhibiting on my team is unacceptable, and I will not stand for it. The way that this team works is very, very limited touches through that space. I'm just going to put it out there. It's a, it's a dump, chase, recover, and, and create. New England's a tough team to do that against. The Omir Fernandez disrespect is absolutely uncalled for. And uh, next time I see you, you better be wearing a helmet. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Let's let's go. I, I'm going to go to the game right before against, I think, Colum Columbus. Omir Fernandez, 32 touches, 14 passes, and he only played 11 more minutes than he did in the last game. Yeah, because Columbus didn't deal with the way that we did it, the way that we played as well as New England did. You're going to have games with teams that just deal with it better. That's why we couldn't generate. And we were away at, at Gillette Stadium, which we never play well in. That's just the way that things happen. You are out of line, and I no. don't like you. I'm, I'm not out of line. You're out of line. You completed three passes the whole game. You three. didn't complete a single pass all game. I wasn't there. I wasn't playing. You're out of your mind, and I'm going to hit you. 
Um, 